So right now, I'm going to add at the top of my screen, and I'm really going through like the mesh, the curve, and the surfaces to kind of show you what it should look like. So I'm going to go to curve and add a circle. And with that top right, I'm going to bring it up. So on the right side of your screen, you should see objects, modifiers, physics, constraints, data, all of that. So you're going to want to go to data and scroll down all the way to geometry. You're going to see offset, extrude, taper, taper radius, and then you're going to see depth. So you're going to want to, I like to do it to two, but some people like it as like a one. So you're going to want to do S to scale. And I'm just moving it, um, trying to model it to my rig. This is me struggling. <laughs> And I'm not making it perfect just because this is a tutorial and I'm not selling it. So right here, I'm going to make a class. Um, so again, I'm going to go to add and I'm going to add a circle. I'm going to move it to the side. And um, I like to have it as like a four just for my base because a lot of people like their necklaces thicker or thinner. Then I'm just moving it, um, trying to make it as straight as possible. So I'm moving it up to my rig and my model, whatever you want to call it. And I'm using S to scale down. And I didn't like it as a 4, so I moved it up to a 9. Then I'm going to press tab to edit it. And just try to like model it to your band. Don't make it too much or it might click but just try to make it like a circle or an oval kind of shape and i'm just rotating it up to make it look more natural and flow better and now i'm going to be adding the text for the actual necklace so again you're going to want to go to add and press text or you can do shift a and find text there i'm pressing tab and then i'm typing and of course your name is gonna be shorter but that's just my server <laughs> and then i'm using s to scale down again and r or left hand side to rotate that I couldn't see so I went to view and I found frame selected and then it kind of zoomed in for me to see it better more clearly and it was just easier to move all around and then what I'm doing right here is I'm just um, changing the depth of my text um, changing the depth of your text is really important not to really make it look better but that will make sure that it kind of imports into Roblox Studio thread. So right now I'm going to be making the charm. Um, you're going to want to go to add at the top of your screen, mesh, and then plane. And then R or left hand side to rotate. I like using the left hand side just because it's more precise. At the top of your screen, by these colorful little dots, V, Y, X, you're going to see this little like paper transparent looking icon. Um, I'll have an arrow pointing to it. You're going to do tab and then press that icon. You're going to zoom into your charm and press K to cut it out of the plane.
And if you do make a mistake like I did here, um, you can press Control Z and you can redo it. You want to make sure that it's very precise just because it can look really wonky and just low quality if it's not. And you're going to drag, click, right click and delete vertices. So you're just going to move it to the side and then hit that transparent icon again. And then we're just going to be going back to your necklace and we're going to be duplicating that clasp we made a little bit earlier. So you can do shift D to duplicate or you can click your clasp and you can right click and press duplicate object. I just want to move it to wherever you want your charm to be. I had a really hard time, like, I guess, putting it to the right position. I'm going to click the charm and you do the S to scale down. And again, you're just going to be moving it to where you want your charm to be on your clasp. Tab E, and then you're going to extrude it outwards or on the front of it. And then you're going to go at the top of your screen, there's going to be a little drop down menu. Um, you're going to want to do base orientation. If anything on your necklace is red, that's going to be a problem. And I'll show you how to fix that in a moment. So what I'm doing right here is I'm just on Pinterest looking for a paw drawing. That's not going to be too hard to outline. And then I'm going to end up importing that to Blender. So after I import that, I'm just making sure it's straight as possible. And then I'm going to add at the top of my screen, Mesh Plane. Again, I'm using that tab and then transparent combo that I talked about earlier. And I'm using K to cut it out. And this doesn't have to be precise because we are adding a modifier to it. So you're going to again click, drag, right click, and then delete the vertices. We're going to go to modifier and then add a subdivision surface. And then we're going to bring it up to 3. And then you see how when you extrude it, it gets all ruffly and it looks, it doesn't have the right look I'm going for. So we're going to go to modifiers and add a solidify modifier. And I like to have it kind of thick. Again, we're going to add a plane and we're going to go put that up to our reference. And again, this doesn't have to be precise at all. This can actually be pretty far from the actual outline because we are adding a subdivision surface and that kind of makes it smoother. So again, click, drag, right click and delete vertices. And then you're gonna see it has those like kind of weird things, the little lines and that big blob of plane. So you're just going to kind of cut that out in the random zigzag and then for the little lines I'm going to edit mode and then you're going to see that little thing and press 2 on your keyboard or that arrow and you're going to do dissolve edges or delete edges. And then we're adding a subdivision surface again. And it looks 
It's weird when you extrude it again, so we're going to add a solidify. You're going to shift and right click on both of them so they don't join together. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to modifier and I'm using a decimate modifier. And then I'm going to set my modifier to 0.1. The reason why we have to decimate is because Roblox has a 4K triangle limit. You can see what you can see how many triangles you have at the top of your screen on the drop down menu where you got base orientation. It defines statistics. Right now, I'm just converting everything to a mesh. So you're gonna have to split screen. You can split screen by dragging the right of your screen or the left of your screen to the middle of it. So I'm just going to UV map and I'm pressing tab A. I need to see it doesn't look like the text. So I'm going to UV on the right and I'm doing project from here. And then I'm doing tab A and just scaling it down and putting it forward. And you can use R to rotate if your UV comes upside down. And then right here, I'm just selecting everything. I'm going to RBIS Paint X. Um, or you can use anything else, but this is just what I like to use. And I'm importing my UV layout to RBIS Paint. I'm going to Filter, Stroke Elder, and I'm making it red. I'm adding a new layer and I'm putting the little arrow with clipping on. I'm adding in my charm. Now you can start coloring out your layout. Please make sure that every single layer that you use does have clipping enabled or that little arrow.
So you're gonna save your work, then we're gonna go back to Blender and we're going to select whatever you're coloring but you have to do it one by one So I'm selecting my X and I'm going to select material so it's gonna be that little red icon on the right side of your screen new, base color, and then image texture and you do have to do all of these one by one 